It's a new Halo. That means there's a ton of new weapons that come bundled with their own beautiful set of animations. Why don't we review every weapon animation available to us for no other reason than fun? Yeah, I think we can do that. Let's start with the Assault Rifle. Ever since Halo 3, the Assault Rifle Reload has been broken up into three main parts. Mag Out, Mag In, Bolt Charged. With a non-empty reload being Mag Out, Mag In, Mag Slapped. Halo Infinite is no different. What is cool though is the way that the Spartan will actually use their thumb to hit the mag release in this very exaggerated way. As smooth as the animation for the reload is, I think it's maybe a tad bit frictionless. There isn't a lot of resistance behind the insertion of the new mag or the charging of the weapon. It makes the reload come off as a tad toothless. That's an issue that's corrected by the non-empty reload, which is a lot more snappiness and friction behind it. Now, speaking of snappiness, next up is the Commando. Simply put, the animations of this thing are the bee's knees. Every subtle hand movement, tilt of the gun, and shift of weight feels deliberate, masterful, and confident. In fact, if I could describe the animations in one word, they feel confident. Look at the way the Spartan shakes the entire magazine out of the gun in one quick motion. It's a weapon I initially disliked due to it being quite a bit different. It's not a bullpup human rifle, which is kind of a staple of the series, but after using it, and feeling the rattly weight and seeing the sexy reload animation, my heart was won over. Yes, Commando, you may look more like a Titanfall gun than you do a Halo gun, but I won't complain when you have animations as beautiful and smooth as these. It's funny that I mention hearts being won over, since the next weapon on this list is the Sidekick. The Sidekick has animations that absolutely live up to its name. Everything from pulling it out, to firing it, to reloading and meleeing. It's an ultimate backup weapon. Each animation for it has this sense of urgency and trained execution. You get the sense that the Spartan has been trained well on how to whip this thing out at a moment's notice, being able to expertly slap a new clip in with exact precision. I love using the sidekick, if nothing more than for how tactical and expertly trained all of the animations make me feel. This thing feels good to use. Next up is the Battle Rifle. This is one that I feel a bit iffy on. I'm not sure if parts of the animations are unfinished or if they're not being interpolated correctly at higher than 60 frame rates, but it feels a bit jerky, especially when the gun is falling or reacting to gravity in an animation, such as tossing it around or letting it fall back into the firing position after charging the handle. Most reload animations are quite easy to read, but for some reason the Battle Rifle just looks off in a way that I can't quite describe. My theory is that maybe all of the animations for this weapon were initially a lot slower, but for the sake of balancing, they were all sped up and it just looks awkwardly paced. Now, the rocket launcher is a weapon that I think is quite nice. Seeing as this is a heavy shoulder-mounted monster, there is a serious weight when it lands on the shoulder, with a very quick and impactful shudder from the camera. Instantly, the weapon feels heavy when picking it up. The act of firing it also conveys a proper sense of weight and power. I do wish that there was a little bit less gun flash and maybe a bit more smoke left behind from the ignited rocket leaving the barrel. But when reloading this thing, the Spartan is able to eject the empty tubes with a single hand, replace them, and then slam that launcher closed before repositioning it on their shoulders with another satisfying camera shake. I love the weight and presentation of this rocket launcher. It feels good to use, with my only gripes being the lack of smoke left behind after firing the rocket, and the loud firing sound that's ironically louder than the actual detonation of the rocket. Let's move on to the classic shotgun's little brother, the Bulldog. The Bulldog's firing animations are quite fast, with the Spartan making use of the grip on the front of the weapon to not just pump it, but bring the Bulldog under control after each violent kick. Firing multiple shots in quick succession make it feel like a weapon that the Spartan is just barely keeping under control. Despite the rather loud and aggressive firing animations, the reload is rather quiet and understated. The Spartan wiggles the little round drum out of the weapon and then just inserts a new one without much fuss or argument from the weapon. The Spartan then gives the gun a quick little pump before letting loose with another hail of shells. For such an aggressive firing animation, the rather low-key reload is interesting. It's almost like this brief moment of quiet for the weapon before the snarling and barking of the gunshots continue, fitting animations for the name. 
Next up is the sniper rifle. Ever since Halo 2, the sniper rifle's reload is a rather fun part of its identity. The way the weapon droops when the magazine leaves the gun, conveying the length and awkwardness of holding a sniper rifle with one hand before the gun snaps upwards with the force of the new magazine being inserted. I was quite excited to see Infinite's new take, and I found the Infinite one to be a little bit interesting. It's much stiffer and a bit less exaggerated than past animations, and I'm not sure if I like it as much because of this. It's got just a little less character and style behind it, and when combined with the lack of smoke after each fire, it leads to this sniper feeling a bit sterile. Of course the Spartan should be able to hold the barrel relatively steady while they're reloading it, but exaggeration can convey character and personality. The new reload lacks a bit of character that helped make the old one so fun to reload. The firing animations for it, however, are a ton of fun. The way the camera shudders under each boom, the way a ripple moves across the weapon and up the Spartan's arms. It's a good feeling sniper. It's just in need of a bit more exaggeration and some smoke after each gunshot. Come on, Halo, you used to have that smoke there. Where'd it go? And finally, for the humans, the UNSC Hydra. The weapon has multiple firing modes that can be cycled between, conveyed by subtle changes to the front of the gun. Reloading the new Hydra is quite fun as well as a feeding mechanism pops out of the gun, accepts the new rocket, retreats back into the gun for a second, and then pops back out ready for a new rocket. Reloading this thing kind of feels like feeding a cute little pet gopher or something the way it just pops out of its hole. With a much easier on the eyes design and a cute little personality filled reload, this is a Hydra I won't mind using in the new Halo. With the UNSC weapons out of the way, it's time to move on to the Banished. Let's start with the Banished Plasma Pistol. What I quite like about the Plasma Pistol in this game is how just uncomfortable it looks to hold due to it being an alien weapon made for alien hands. The Spartan just kind of awkwardly rests their hand underneath the Plasma Pistol, not sure what to do with it. And the act of venting it and handling it is very fiddly and requires a lot of random buttons being pressed. And overall, there's a lack of elegance in the way that your Spartan uses this thing, which is a nice stark contrast to the sidekick, which was designed for human use. Rather satisfying animations are then complemented by pretty solid sound design from this thing. Listen to it hum. Next up is the Needler. Halo's Needlers are fun to use in general, and the Halo Infinite Needler is no different. One of the best running gags in the series is that nobody's quite sure how the character actually reloads this thing, and this rendition of the Needler keeps that joke going. It's a very weighty and heavy reload, and interestingly, it's not the classic flick that the series has used ever since its introduction in Halo 2. Yeah, that flick is completely gone in this game. The new animation, in fact, feels a bit more inspired by the original Combat Evolved animation, albeit with a bit more aggression. It almost feels like a porcupine flaring up its quills. When doing a non-empty reload, you get a very fast and snappy reload animation, and while not being the classic flick, it's still quite satisfying. And as if icing on the cake, when meleeing the needler in this game, the player is greeted with a very familiar animation. Yes, 343 recreated the classic Halo Combat Evolved melee animation with the production value and talent of modern animators. The Spartan aggressively, violently slams the whole collection of needles into the face of anyone unfortunate to be standing in front of them. Nice. Next on the list is the Pulse Carbine. It's a burst plasma weapon that shudders and kicks in the Spartan's hands while being fired. And like the plasma pistol, there's a touch of awkwardness and unfamiliarity in how the Spartan handles it. A touch I love is how when the weapon overheats and opens its vents, there's a delayed reaction from the operator. It catches the Spartan by surprise and they quickly move their hand out of the way of the vent so that they don't get burnt before readjusting the weapon back into the firing position. Next up is the Banished Mangler. It's a revolver made for our favorite space monkeys, and man does this thing feel and look mean. In fact, the entire gun just shivers and flinches under each shot, and it makes the Mangler feel haphazardly assembled, and like it's at risk of just falling apart in the next few months. The awkward weight and aggression behind its reload animations, firing and melee animations, make the gun feel just on point as a weapon fit for a brute. This thing is fun to use. Next up is the Banished Shock Rifle. Even more so than the Mangler, this thing feels very slapped together. 
with leather straps, bolts, and rusted metal all over. And as a nice bit of personality, the underside of the barrel looks a bit like a motorcycle handlebar, which is kind of a flair that the brutes tend to have in their design language. The barrel of the shock rifle has been restructured into a magnetic cage of sort, which controls and contains an electrical charge built up by the gun. Each time the weapon is fired, the gun shivers and recoils as a stream of electricity is projected out of the gun. When the player fires their last shot, the weapon completely powers down. The electricity in the cage is gone. This is where a cool detail comes in. Instead of reloading a magazine of some kind, the player flicks off this little brick from the top of the weapon and then puts in a new brick. The brick is slapped into place, and when that brick clicks, energy is restored to the barrel of the gun. The act of reloading is the equivalent of just changing out the batteries. It's a shame that the Brutes enjoy things like punching humans, smashing stuff, and eating bananas, because the Brutes' knowledge of magnetic and electrical engineering is quite impressive. This thing's a proper Tesla gun. Next up is the Banished Ravager looking a bit like a brute spiker's bigger brother. The Ravager is a weapon I'm quite fond of, sporting an angry bayonet on the front. The Ravager can be described as kind of an angry goo gun. When firing the weapon, globs of hot, gooey plasma are flung far from the user and splash all over the place, burning everything that the goo rests on. As you fire it, plasma vapors build up, emitting from the vents on the side of the weapon, growing in intensity as the gun builds up heat until eventually overflowing, shaking the gun violently and requiring the Spartan to flush the built-up plasma from the weapon before the angry thing calms down and is ready to fire again. When overcharging it, it seems like the Spartan is deliberately overloading the weapon, creating a massive glob of goo that spreads fire all over the place. And this is an area of the game that unfortunately I don't think looks that great. Halo has done brute fire weapons in the past, most notably Halo 3, and the fire effects in that game looked excellent. In Halo Infinite, I'll be honest, they leave a lot to be desired. It looks kind of cheap when compared to a game from 2007, if I'm honest. Next up is the Banished Gravity Hammer. This is a weapon with quite a lot of weight behind its animations. The Spartan raises the weapon before allowing it to come crashing down on anyone unfortunate enough to be standing in front of them. The power of this weapon is only let down by the rather soft sound, which sounds a bit more like a box falling in someone's garage than this magnetized, atmosphere-disrupting gravity wave. It doesn't help that Infinite doesn't have pushback on the player, which knocked them back a few steps in previous games, making the weapon feel weighty and important. It leads to the Infinite Hammer feeling a bit sterile, or flat for lack of a better term. A disappointing regression in presentation from previous hammers. The skewer is quite a wonderful feat of monkey engineering. What I find cool about the weapon is that it's a shoulder-mounted railgun. The banished weapon is awkward, the grips far too large for human hands, which is probably why it's way more comfortable for the Spartan to hold the skewer on their shoulders instead of trying to use the stock. Upon firing it, the screen shakes and buckles as the piercing, shrieking whine of the shot rings across the map. Then the Spartan inserts a brand new spike into the weapon's barrel and manages to crank the firing mechanism with some effort. If I did have any feedback to give, I feel a crank that sucker back just a little bit higher to sell the effort of the action. It's more or less though, just a small nitpick. This thing feels good to use. Next up is the energy sword. Now, it's hard to talk about this one since there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on it. It's currently missing its sounds and the ignition animation is missing some gas and energy effects the overall stance and confidence in which it's held is nice. It uses a stance more evocative of Halo 2, and upon swinging it, some of the animations are quite fast and aggressive. I like the overhead swing quite a bit, but I do find the side slash to be a bit on the stiff and awkward side. I'm eager to see how the finalized weapon feels and looks, because this is clearly still cooking in the oven. So let's put it back in and let's move on to the next weapon. And finally, the banished arsenal ends on the disruptor. It subtly vibrates in the player's hands, probably due to that arc generator in the frame of the weapon building a static charge. When firing it, it's also got very little recoil. 
with really only the mechanisms of the weapon causing any sort of kickback. It's a very stable feeling gun, and like its bigger rifle brother, the weapon is battery operated, so a quick change of the battery pack introduces a new charge to the gun and it's ready to fire again. Not much to say, it's solid all around. A bit unremarkable, but to be fair, not every weapon needs to win an attention contest. You reserve that honor for the heavy hitters. And now, in closing the video off, we take a look at the Forerunner devices on offer. The Heat Wave is an interesting gun. It almost feels like someone took a Sentinel and compacted it into the silhouette of a shotgun. Pay attention to two things on the weapon. The front of the weapon, where an energy field seems to be sustained, and this circular battery thing. When the weapon is fired, the mechanical claws cause this reaction of some kind in the energy field, and a multicolored burst of hard light is propelled forward from the weapon. The battery will spin with each gunshot, cycling through the available charges. Once exhausted, the Spartan releases some kind of mechanism, and a multicolored light show happens as more energy is fed from the battery to whatever that energy field is at the front of the gun, powering it back up. It is such an alien weapon in function. The hard-like trails that it fires look like these little meteorites. The multicolored gases it emits remind me of nebula that we read about in science class, or how the Spartan reacts to the weapon randomly doing things like readjusting the battery. The Spartan stops for a second, unsure if maybe this is something to worry about. The gun itself just has this otherworldly quality to it. The only area of complaint for me is that the energy field at the front of the gun is not animated at higher than 30 FPS, which causes it to look quite cheap, especially so if you're playing at something like 144 FPS like me. Most folks probably won't notice that, but people with ADHD such as myself, we notice stuff like this and it drags the presentation down quite a bit. Hopefully the PC version gets the ability to run these gas animations at an unlocked frame rate. The next Forerunner device is the Cinder Shot. Like the Heat Wave, the Cinder Shot has an energy field that's being sustained at the front of the gun that also, rather distractingly, seems to render at 30 FPS. The display on the weapon also looks 30 FPS. We're going to put that to the side though, hopefully that's fixed when the game launches. In general, the weapon has some pretty alien and foreign animations. The reload for this weapon in particular is somehow even stranger and more alien than the Heat Waves. The whole gun just looks hungry and unstable when it's reloading. The mechanisms of the gun pumping up up and down makes the thing look like it's got this angry mouth that's just gnashing its teeth at the player. And then when it's all done, the weapon quiets down and is ready to fire again. This thing feels good. And finally, here we are, the Sentinel Beam. Past Sentinel Beams were not really weapons, rather they were pieces of a Sentinel that you used as a weapon. They were held awkwardly because they were just a chunk of a machine that you found. Here in Infinite, the Sentinel Beam appears to be more of a proper gun that was designed to be used in someone's hands, though maybe not a human's hands, since it still does look quite awkward to hold, which is nice and gives it that otherworldly quality. The front of the gun emits that familiar deep violet slash lavender gas that also unfortunately updates at a lower frame rate, but when firing the weapon it releases this beam of cosmic energy, this multicolored light show that causes the camera and Spartan to buckle under the force of the beam. It feels powerful to use in a way that's usually hard to convey in games. Sustained fire is not advisable, and when the weapon needs to be recharged, an angry orange glow from deep within the device spirals energy up the rotating firing mechanism to the front of the gun, and then it's ready to dish out more hard light. The Sentinel Beam is a powerful tool, and one of my favorite uses that I discovered when capturing footage was it can even disintegrate various physics objects in the world. Scraps and hoods of vehicles can be erased by its energy. Halo Infinite may be a few months away, but already its arsenal is showing a lot of personality and character. What's your favorite set of animations from many of the weapons shown? Hell, what's your favorite animation from any Halo game? Or any animation from any game ever? And before I close this video off, I want to announce that I'm opening up channel memberships. Late night gaming couldn't be the thing it is today without you. And if you want to continue supporting the channel, it's just the price of a coffee every month. Consider checking it out, and I'll see you guys on the next video.